Hello and welcome to another episode of Heal Thyself, Benefits of Holistic Living. I'm Mia Signs, your host, and in this segment with me is Zephora Kingsbury. Now, this girl rocks, and I'm really excited that I work a lot with publicists, as you know, because of my radio shows and my other shows. So I'm really excited that she's here because she came that way, which is totally awesome. Welcome, Zephora. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. This is super fun. <laughs> I'm excited for you to be here. Now, there's so much I want to just throw at you. So um, <laughs> we'll go slowly. Thank and, you. <laughs> and for all of you, this is the one thing I really wanted to um, get you excited about. So she is going to share with us as we get to those questions or maybe even in her background story. But she was on The Bachelor as one of the um, love coaches, so or the love coach. So we're going to get to that in a minute, which is so exciting. Um, will you share with us a little bit about your history, your journey that brought you to where you are today? Do you want the long story or the short story? <laughs> Whatever is most impactful for you and will rock people's socks off. Okay, great. Well, you know, I, when I reflect on this question, you know, I think back of when I was 10 years old and um, I got my menstrual cell at a very young age and the whirlwind of emotions, right, that went through my body and feelings that I had no, I had no way of dealing with them. And, and at that age, no one, I wasn't taught into relating how to deal with my sexuality, how my body um, in spack of all the ways that I kind of mm -hmm. from feel much as I could have felt because I didn't know. And then jumping forward, it, it led up into my 20s where I was a competitive bodybuilder for five years. Mm -hmm. um, owned a nutrition business, was on the top of my game in the sport, um, was thinking about doing fitness modeling, um, but I wasn't listening. Like I was still pushing. I was still pushing myself really hard and not paying attention to certain emotions, certain feelings. Um, my body was talking to me and I was saying, quiet. <laughs> I woke up one day and I could barely. Wow. And, and it, there were signs leading up to that, um, but it was just a, a big crash. I put on about 30 pounds, 48 hours. You know, so I went from competition, you know, mm -hmm. physique to, to that. Um, definitely hit hit hard on the emotional body, hard on, on my psyche, hit hard, you know, I felt like my whole world just ended. Mm -hmm. But what it did, you know, obviously the first days, a month, it was really challenging and there was a lot of emotions. But then I thought to myself, you know, wow, I have a choice. And what is this telling me? What is my body communicating to me? What do I need to listen to? Um, and I was grateful to have awareness. Um, and I started diving in, opening books, and, and just diving deeper into energy awareness and, and different spirituality. Um, then I got a hit. I got a hit. I needed to go somewhere. And so I Googled. I looked on Google. Um, this school in Switzerland popped up. And it was the International School of Shiatsu and Cranial Sacral. Um, it was a macrobiotic institute. It was this school that housed international teachers, like different teachers every week, flew into the space. And something in my gut was I need, uh, that was where I was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. awesome. I never left America in my life, <laughs> you yeah. know. And, That's awesome. Yeah, and so that was kind of like the big turning point in my career. <laughs> I was already an entrepreneur. Um, I was always, already taking care of people and helping people learn about their bodies. Um, yet this was the next step, and this was the big aha, the big shift. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love that. I love that. And the way that it processed for you was um, so different from just the concentration on the physical body and, and that and, and the dramatic within 48 hours of just collapsing, you know, that's really your body and your, and your spirit and your soul is just like, I've had enough. That's really powerful. That's amazing. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So, um, what let's, since you talk about love and all this actually share with us exactly, because I want to talk about int intimacy and things like that, but share with us exactly what, um, you do with a client. So somebody comes to see you and, it can be a gamut of things. So tell us what you do, and then we're going to get into our question and answers. Yeah. Um, so, you know, look at what I did to my body and wasn't listening. So, mm -hmm. so using me as an example is I was then diving deep into developing an intimate relationship with my body again. Mm -hmm. And so when clients come to me living in an overstimulated world, um, really they're happy clients, they're happy people, usually very successful in business, and they've lost touch with their intimate intimate life, their sexual life, their their emotional life. You know, they've lost touch with that. And so when they come to see me, we go to ground zero and we start to 
go into the emotional patterning. We start to clear the emotions, not just clear, we start to understand them, communicate them, notice how the body reacts and responds and start to plant new seeds, new skills to sustainably change and create a new way of living that's more intimately engaging and alive. That's awesome. Wonderful. Good. Love it because there are so many people out there that cannot function just even on an energetic level. Our, our energy of who we are, our spirit, our soul has to connect with our mind and our body in order to produce beauty in, in life. Because if one aspect is missing, you know, it, it, it's like one of those scales that if you put too many rocks on one side or a teeter-totter, then boink, it's, it's off. So yes. That's yeah. very, very cool. And also, and look at me, I'm so excited. And before we get into more questions, tell us about your experience on The Bachelor because that's really, really cool. <laughs> it was really, it was cool. I thought it was really cool too. And um, the experience was phenomenal. Um, one, for me to be able to take maybe an edgy topic to the masses um, and show it on primetime TV. Um, Huge, you know, I look at that as a door opener for so many people in this line of work. Yeah. Um, the working with them, the, the whole, everything was phenomenal. That's, I mean, I can't say anything bad about the experience. Um, they, they, they got it that they, even the producer and the, the crew, people wanted it, they understood it. Um, they felt it was time to bring this out, out, out to the world. Um, the couple that I worked with, obviously, um, The Bachelor and, and, and Carly, um, they, were, they were amazing because they, they went into deep, vulnerable places, mm. right? And how often does that happen on primetime TV? Like yeah. real, real places and, and real authentic. And I took through, it was about a 90 minute show, um, and they kept 10 minutes of it on, on air. That's, that's really awesome. My mind's going, um, I'm, as a visionary, my mind's going amazing places. After we talk about a show that, oh. that I'm working on and um, it's, You'll, it's up. It's totally your alley. Totally up your alley. So, all right. Let's talk about intimacy. To you, and I already know. I'm. I know from your heart already what you're going to speak of. But let's talk about intimacy. I'm turning it over to you. Okay. Well, it's funny. I have a seminar in two days, and it's called the Myths of Intimacy. Right. Um, how How many people think intimacy is sex? Like it, exactly. it's. We say we had an intimate moment with someone and they automatically clench up, contract, and they have this fear of that it was a sex, something sexual. Mm -hmm. um, intimacy is something we need to hide. Um, for me, again, how much presence, awareness, mindfulness, how much do we feel, how much are we understanding others, how aware are we, that's intimacy. It's, mm -hmm. it's when you're that open and that vulnerable center that someone else can really see inside of you because you're no longer scared that you no longer need to hide your core need to hide the things that you judge you can be really authentic and honest and that means every moment of life it's like life turns from black and white to high death color mm -hmm. every moment it's like making yeah. love to life to me that's it yeah now let's talk about um you talked about intimacy and self but how would you work with people on i love this because my work too how would you <laughs> how would you um Talk to people, give tips on bringing out that truly intimacy between a couple. It has to start with ourselves. Otherwise, we're not connected. There's people who, I, I actually had a guy I was seeing um, intimately as well, besides saying, I said, no, I really don't want to look in the eyes because um, it's too intimate. And I'm like, okay, you know, another partner says something else. It's like, because they're not self. And out of we have to be with some, you know, of course, we have to evolve to the stage that respects us connected to themselves. Will you talk about that that's true intimacy? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Something that we don't have of us, you know, it, it's like, I'm going to use touch as an example. So often we, we want our partners to act a certain way to us. We want our partners to give us certain things. We want our partners to touch us in certain ways, yet we, we're so busy running from ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we're empty, we're drained, we have no fuel, but we're draining our partners to get the fuel. That's mm -hmm. typically the, what the wor world relates as intimacy when they're grasping someone else. Mm -hmm. So that's where the conflict in relationships happens. Mm -hmm. When interdependent relationships where we are responsible for what juices us up, we go out and we, and we, when we take care of ourselves, we, we do the projects that excite us. Um, our, our partners aren't responsible for our, our emotional breakdowns or our emotions. Mm -hmm. Yet, 
we're doing everything that you said to get to know ourselves um, and even through actions to really take actions that serve ourselves get to know our values get to know our likes and our dislikes get to know um, how we like to be touched how we don't like to be touched um, and become so centered and clear that we can approach our partner and we don't have to be in agreement yet in a place that we actually really want to understand each other mm -hmm. I don't believe partners need to agree mm -hmm. But it's like, wow, I want to understand why you do that. I wouldn't do it like that. And I don't right. even like let you do that. But I want yeah. to understand you. Yeah. I love you. That's yeah. intimacy. And that comes from, like you just said, the center being emotionally stable inside of us. Do you also believe or what is your belief system on intimacy um, with the self-connection and towards from our childhood? Um, can you state that a little differently? I'm not sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, for me, what I've seen as a self-love teacher, as a love person, um, I've seen people who cannot be intimate. It's because it's from trauma, whatever, lack of connection to self. If somebody came to you and said, my spouse, my, or it wouldn't probably even get that far at this point, my boyfriend, um, you know, well, I guess like that situation with me. Uh, my boyfriend doesn't want to have, you know, intimates looking into each other's eyes. What would you say to that to, to support them? You know, obviously it stems from the partner, not her, you know, the partner having issues. So how would you address that for someone? Um, I would take a couple different steps in that. One, I would go into how she reacted and responded to that mm -hmm. right? and, and how she took it. Um, we would go into clearing maybe those beliefs that someone needs to act a certain way. For her to be happy mm -hmm. um, and then we would go into how could they have a conversation that might take that to the next step and that might be that heart-centered communication that mm -hmm. show your partner how much you acknowledge them how much you understand they're being scared mm -hmm. for looking into your eyes yeah. ask them why get to understand like you just said that what happens in our childhood mm -hmm. and then go from there and then they can make a decision whether their values meets right or not but still take the steps to get closer to investigate to understand it. Awesome. Awesome advice. Also now, will you share with us, what, um, and I asked you a little bit before, but people, um, what brings them to you besides that you're cool, you know? <laughs> what are they looking for within themselves that they want to heal, grow, learn, experience, demonstrate? Mm -hmm. Usually it's people who, who they're very happy, they're very successful in business, um, they're kind of on the top of their game, they are spiritual seekers, um, and they're noticing they've, they've lost attention in the intimate areas of their life, their, emotional, their emotions became, become overloaded, um, and sexually they're feeling disconnected. They're noticing their relationships are starting to feel superficial, and not just romantic relationships, but even with colleagues, with friends, the conversations have become more superficial. And people are, are wanting to shift the quality of that. They're wanting more. A lot of that, do you believe when they're getting that way, when they're becoming very spiritual and stuff, um, do you take it back to, um, and I'm just curious, as we grow spiritually, we do start to disconnect somewhat from our friends and stuff through main society because our thought processes are different and we're looking for a different goal in life. How would, if I came to you and I said, my friends are just disappearing, they don't understand, you know, my, the love in my life, which is, you know, me and my connection and my spirituality, what would you say to them? Yeah, so, so, you know, as we shift, obviously every day we're changing, and, and so it's like the seasons. As we change, our life changes, we grow, spiritual journeys shift us, our, our relationships are going to change. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would invite people to go with the flow of that because they're changing. But the other thing I would also check in is, you know, are they pulling themselves back because they're scared to have conversations mm -hmm. about their new path? Um, and if that's the case, I would invite them into actually being more transparent and having these conversations because then they would also notice either people couldn't have those conversations yeah. and then they would just consciously choose, well, great, I'm going to go over here and ha go into a different yeah. community. But then it's more empowering that way. Yeah. A lot of people I noticed, um, or at least it tell me in the spiritual community, people don't understand me or, you know, they don't want to hear this stuff. And it's like, well, some newbies are very excited about their spirituality and yes, it can turn people off. But I love how you said that, to examine it and to see what feels right for you. That's wonderful. Okay. 
share with us about um, intimacy and why it's so difficult um, just overall in our world? Yeah, you know, we live in such a fast-paced world. We, you know, from childhood on, we're, we're taught that to work really hard is what makes us good people. Um, we're going to, from meeting to point A to point B. We're getting the children to school. We're getting things done. I find it's a, it becomes habitual, right? It's a habitual disconnection. People start, stop to feel. They're, they're taught that feelings are bad, taught to be scared of their feelings. Something may have happened in their life where they did feel and had a bad response. Um, so it's a buildup of conditioning and habit. Mm -hmm. Great. Now share with us, um, let's talk about what kind of clients come to you that seem to, what's the most difficult thing that people come to see you for? Mm. I would, you or, know, cha or challenging. Challenging, challenging, yeah. That's a better word than difficult. <laughs> you, know, you, you have, yeah, you have people who have recognized that their emotional overload, um, th their emotional fears have actually interfered with their um, sexual sexuality and their functioning. You know, I've worked with men and women um, who are unable to orgasm. They're, they're just not fully present in their body, um, prevents anxiety. And they're able to get so deep in that, realizing their fear of villainy, not knowing how to talk about the tough stuff. Um, yeah. And so those are, that's intense for people. You know, they, they have all this pressure. People live with so much pressure. Yeah. Doing sex part work, um, I think, is really important. I used to just be a relationship couples coach and sex expert. And then when I um, dove into how, how to connect them even deeper is when I brought in the self-love work years ago and it's just I I appreciate that you're talking about it with grace because it is one of the most powerful experiences is to be intimate with a cup with a with a partner in that respect and there are we're so there's some that are hot people who are hot and sexy and some who are a little bit less hot and still sexy and then when they get married or in a long-term relationship those aspects of um, either a male or a female, something can block them from, again, their childhood, their upbringing that cuts them off. So that work is so important. And I love that yeah. the way you explained it, because some people don't realize that a lot of people don't, they just surrender their life. And what they're doing is they're surrendering their health because not just the oxytocin and all that stuff, but our bodies need to orgasm in order to be stronger and healthier. The pelvic floor in a woman, you know, I mean, we could go, we could have a huge, you know, month long series, you and I just on that talk, because not only is it fun, but it's very important to be connected at all and all. So I'm honoring you for that. Thank yeah, you. Thank was, you. Thank you. That's really amazing. Let's talk about how intimacy works in living an empowered life. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, if intimacy can be in all of our conversations, our communications, how empowering it is that we can we can ask for what we want and not be scared of that. We can um, talk about the tough stuff, knowing that the person that we're talking to may not be in agreement, but wow, by talking about it, it actually opens the door to, again, I said that understanding and wanting to get to know each other. That's intimacy. So, so the more that we're connected in our experiences, the more we have empowered choices. Mm -hmm. And we make those empowered choices without that intimate connection even to our own body, we're not clear in our values. We have a hard time asking for what we're not. We don't feel so confident, we feel insecure. Um, and, and that's because there's a lack of intimate connection. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a great segue. Can you give us three tips for people on how to awaken their intimacy? Mm -hmm. Slow down. <laughs> You know, I give the simplest tips, and they're just, but they're practical, you know? That's they're awesome. <laughs> you know, it's, so another one would be to slow down. So imagine you're at work, busy work, you're going to the office, you're rushing home, your partner's at home, and you immediately get home, and rather than resting, you rush into your partner and start having a lot of, like, fast conversation you're not feeling in your body. What I would suggest is to, when you get home, go into your own space. Sit there, close the door, breathe for five minutes, pay attention to what your body's feeling. Just bring your attention to your body from your feet all the way to your head. Get centered, calm your nervous system down. And then from that place, go meet your partner. Mm 
or go see your friend or your roommate, wh whoever that is, and then bring that presence to them. I would play with an exercise that you're sitting across from each other and doing the same thing. Just looking at them and saying, you know, I just want to breathe with you for five mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah. And just sit there and look at each other and breathe. Laugh if it feels funny, you know, feel what comes up for you. Mm -hmm. But support each other in the breathing because what you're doing, again, you're soothing the nervous system. You're getting deeper in your body. You're going to be more present because then the third point is now you can go into a conversation and become an active listener. Mm -hmm. The other person can start talking and rather than us jumping in to, to give advice or to compare our stories, that's usually how most conversations happen, mm -hmm. we can step back and say, you know, I want to hear what, how your day was. Mm -hmm. Just sit there and you're so calm, right? And so much is going in when we're in that calm place. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're good receivers, aren't we, when we're calm? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's interesting about, um, and I like what you said about, except for you have to let your people know, you have to let your peace know that this is, this is the way you function. And look at me on the other side when I come out in five minutes, how, how different I am. But that's really brilliant to center yourself when you get home. You know, everybody comes home and it's kisses and hugs and running off to do this or to do that. And we don't, even if you do kisses and hugs first, take that time, right? To center yourself before you re-engage with, with the people in your, in your household. Yeah, because, you know, think about it. I bet when most people hug or kiss when they get home, they don't really feel it. Mm. It becomes right, right, a, right. a common thing. We do. We automatically yeah. kiss someone when we come home. They don't feel it. But imagine if you came out after you were still and how slow and passionate and connected that kiss would be. And how different your body would feel. Yeah. Totally different. You know, that is probably one of the pieces of, of advices I've never given or heard that I really am so glad you said that because that is just... It's really, really important. And, and I know that, that people might be going, well, Mia, very cool that you got a new tip. But the thing is, is that it's really powerful. Because as you said, won't that kiss be so much better when you take the time to center yourself and to just be with who you are? And you'll knock the socks off of your partner. And, and doesn't that keep it alive? Yes. That, and people want to feel more, don't they? They yes. want, they, people want more. However, if somewhere in our conditioning, we're, we're taught that we have to fight or grab for want for more. Mm. But this is what gives people more because now they're actually more alive. They're feeling more. This would be really great also connection tool for couples because there is such a separation. And, and after a while, people do say, I want more romance. I want more connection. I want to be paid attention to more. This is a perfect, I'm sorry, I love this one. I, I absolutely love it. Okay, so share with us um, the difference between working with couples and working with singles. Yeah, the, working with couples is interesting because most couples have developed a lot of codependent habits, mm. right? Um, so it can be more challenging working with the couple um, because it, it's kind of, it's shifting a lot of beliefs, it's shifting a lot of habits. Um, and when I work with the couples, they work with me together, and then they work with me by themselves. Because mm -hmm. as, we, as we know, the issues in relationships aren't the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about this at the beginning of the call. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's challenge, more challenging working with a couple. When an individual comes to me, they're usually just ready. They know, obviously, they're working on themselves. Um, they're focusing on themselves, and they're just ready to, to dive in deep. Um, the processes are very similar. It's just you're adding more people. That's awesome. That's awesome. Very good. What makes your work unique? Me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it is you. I, I say the same thing. You know, I'm worth every penny. <laughs> you know, I, I think what makes my, my practice unique is I tend to take the perspective, like you saw the karate kid, <laughs> you know, the wax on, wax off yeah. thing. Um, that's how I work with my clients and with intimacy. Um, I take them to ground zero, to the most places they would, they would never think would relate to intimacy. And they are able to develop this profound relationship that they're, they're blown away. They're like, what just happened? What am I feeling in my body? Um, and so I work with embodiment. My clients learn by going inside of them. They don't giving them skill that they're going to learn from their head. 
Um, and so that's, that's what makes me unique. That's awesome to be so empowered. I love, we need more, need more women in our embrace this and to, to sisterhood of each other actually <laughs> do such powerful women. You know, the, the word goddess is thrown around so much. And actually, I go with the word priestess now, and there's not very many of them. You absolutely fit the one. So it's fun to share all this stuff. So would you like to share your freaking? You're not going to believe it, but we're almost out of <laughs> It goes so fast. And <laughs> <laughs> that makes so much fun. So I have a wonderful, and it's going to really align with what we're next to intimacy. It allows people to kind of go in and read about, you know, what intimacy are and, and uncovering them and truly what they can be and how they can access more intimacy in their lives. That's awesome. I love it. Will you give us a few little uh, sneak peeks out of it just because um, I think I'm getting an intuitive pull that there's something in there that I want to, I want to talk to you about. It, that's just what spirit told me. So. Okay. All right. Hmm. <laughs> um, so the myths, the intimacy, number one is how, how many of us think sex is intimacy, mm -hmm. right? Um, many of us think that intimacy is something that we have, that we can't do in public, that we're only supposed to do with a romantic part. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll go into talking about, you know, how intimacy can be with every person that we look at, mm -hmm. you know, every conversation that we have mm -hmm. and, and how, why it's important in our life. And to to look to the surfing and to feel intimate, go out to eat and have a five minute intimate conversation. You know, and, and the profound wisdom can, that can be that. Mm -hmm. This is very vital, and not just that it's love and unconditional love, but it's nurturing for everyone around. We talk a little bit about that. Oh, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I'm yeah. gonna cry. <laughs> um, God, yeah, you know, um, I travel a lot, and I remember I was in Canada and. I, was, I take the bus up there, and, and, and it reminds me that we are, we're living in a world so separated and, and sometimes so disconnected. Mm -hmm. And what a day we walked into the office, and we shook, but we paused, and we held, mm -hmm. and we looked into their eye. Their night was, asked how their wife took the time, because that's our activity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with the bus, the stranger sitting next to us on the um, We've gone so self in a shell, safe. I have in the world, we shall I agree with, with you. everybody. Too. This is why you're such a sister. Let's talk also, but it's so important for couples to um, connect to each other, even intimate public. We're not talking about how, talking about the soft, gentle touch and not being embarrassed. Don't touch me, that kind of thing. Yeah. Who taught us that it's wrong? You know, that that's the question that's my clients. And they start thinking, they're like, oh, who did tell me? Because then they realize it's not their truth. Right. Right, society, us, people, we've been taught, we hidden, so we know we hide, whereas it's okay to watch people getting their heads on, on, on movies, and build, but we can't hold or, or passionately kiss, see, is what brings people together, right? It opens us up, it makes us more available for everybody. Or even a soft little bum, you know, from yes. your, that makes you feel, especially a gorgeous woman, or something, and you know, you're walking and talking in the grocery store, and your mate does a boom boom on your little bum, you feel like a queen. Yeah. And how yes. much more exciting is yes. that? My partner and I are all over the yeah, place when exactly, we go to the yeah. grocery store. Yeah. You know, so, it, so are we. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It, it, it inspires other people as well. It really does. It, it's you're, you're bringing so much light and so much joy and, mm -hmm. and passion and lightness out there in the world. <sighs> This was so, so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. Okay, before we sign off and say goodbye to everybody, will you share what's coming through your heart right now? I, I feel so, I just feel super grateful. I um, wanted to have this conversation with you. Like, I'm getting all teary. And um, just the importance, I, I, want, I desire people to feel safe in their bodies again. I desire people to realize that their bodies have information and, and wisdom and, and it's okay to feel things. You know, I had a client today call me feeling sad and not wanting to do anything. And I said, what a beautiful opportunity to sit today and have a conversation with your emotions mm -hmm. and just ask them what they need because that's all that our body and our emotions want. That's beautiful and absolutely right on. That's that's very nice. Thank you so much for joining us. It was so wonderful to have you. It really Thank was. Thank you so much. Yeah. I wish you could do another hour you know? <laughs> or actually an hour. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <sighs>
thank you all for joining us and for sharing in this lovely treat. She's so beautiful. And we'll see you all in another segment. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.